What is up, everybody? I am Chris Sutcliffe. I am back. Corona Quiz is back. I can see that my forehead is interfering with the green screen level. There we go. Welcome back, everybody. I know a lot of you will have a lot of questions about this. For instance, Chris, the last time we saw you alive, you were being shot by Her Majesty the Queen. Yes, that's true. But now, nah, you know what? Maybe that's a, uh, a story for another time. Like... Now, so what happened is, you might remember back in week four, I made a, a joke about 5G being a huge conspiracy. Well, it turned out that was all true. And what that did was that got the attention of Her Majesty the Queen, who, it turns out, isn't a parasitic sponge on the corpse of Brexit Britain. No, she's actually like a super cool secret agent. And what she's doing is she's going out and she's like destroying all these 5G towers, which it turns out there's a real conspiracy there. It's fucking insane. So what we're going to do for the rest of this episode is, it, rather than it being a sort of usual quiz, it's going to be a sort of uh, Mission Impossible style recreation of what Her Majesty got up to. Because after she shot me and killed me, she went undercover in prison. All right, so I, I fucked off. I went back to Nepal. It was amazing. I had a great time. Uh, she went undercover and then she broke out of prison and she dismantled the entire... 3G network, which is why we should all be grateful to Her Majesty the Queen. So, let's watch how she did that. Remember, this is all, this is like a, I don't know, a recreation. So this isn't perfect, but this is how I imagine it went down. Strapping, because this is like 12, 15 minutes long. Where's my fucking air support, Philip? Actually, I've just thought, I know her personally, obviously, because we arranged the whole thing together, but you don't know her. That's that's going to be boring as fuck for you. But you do know me. So instead instead of that 15-minute you know, minute explosion-filled elaboration on kind of the whole conspiracy and its real-world impact, Brexit's cancelled, by the way, um, why don't I show you what I got up to when I was back in Nepal? Because you know me. That'll be fun for you. Well, based on the comments, some of you are just goddamn ungrateful. You don't want to see my trip, so I guess we'll just do a regular quiz. All right, so, uh, as ever, you're going to be competing for a, an amazing prize. Now, obviously, it could be our old, pan, our old pal, Busty Ben, a bin with it. One sec. But this week, we actually do have an amazing prize. And to introduce it, I'm going to ask our new cast member, Tiffany, to introduce it. So here we go. So what's behind this door? What's behind the door? That's right. It's a 1979 Ford Esprit. Tiffany, why don't you show them what it's about? Okay, so it is a white car. There's an, there's an engine, presumably, I imagine. Um... And, you know, even though it's uh, a little bit past its sell-by date, you know, I wouldn't mind giving that a test drive. Car's not bad either. Uh, so thank you, Tiffany. Say goodbye to everybody. And hopefully they'll see you later. So we've locked her in that room. And what I want you to do is if you happen to win, please do, again, as ever, mark your own answers. As be strict. What I want you to <laughs> I want you to either put your answer, your correct answers in the chat. I want you to send them through to me at Chris M. Sutcliffe. And uh, if you win, I'll ask you to tell me if you want to open the left door or the right door. The left door or the right door. Phil, you're right. She's a stunner. And she's sticking around for the rest of the series. So there you go. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to pull up this... 
So there you go. What I want you to do is, as you submit your answers, tell me if you want to open the left door or the right door. There's a bin with tits behind one, bin with tits, or on the other hand, there is that Ford Esprit and Tiffany. 1979 Ford Esprit, pre-unleaded. So here we go. We're going to begin with round one, general knowledge. General knowledge, get your pens ready, everybody. Question number one, general knowledge. What type of creature is a painted lady? What type of creature is a painted lady? Just a little sip. Mm. Delicious. Uh, question number two, general knowledge. The name of which pasta means quills in Italian? The name of which pasta means quills in Italian? Maybe think about the pasta shape. Not to give too much away, but I am back now and I'm being more generous than ever. The name of which pasta means quills in Italian? Okay, so I know that pre me going away, we did a round called One Song to the Tune of Another. This time though, anything I could have done has been eclipsed by one of our viewers who sent one in. So, what I want you to do is listen to this clip that was sent in by uh, one Natalie Kerno or Nolly, who you should all be following, by the way, at this address on Twitter. And I want you to tell me the name of the song that she's singing and the name of the song that she's playing on guitar because she's multi-talented. So, listen, you get a point for each. So there are six points total for this round. Here we go. It's Friday night and the lights are low. You're looking out for a place to go where they play. So I'll play that one more time when we go back through the questions. But I want to, you to tell me who she took the lyrics from and who she took the music from. Uh, that's my girlfriend. So, question number four. Where on a horse would you find a frog? Where on a horse would you find a frog? Let me know. Where on a horse would you find a frog? I'm wearing a new tweed jacket. I quite like it. Uh, question number five, um, watch this clip and the um, the question will follow. So watch this clip because the question is going to follow. Oh, that's good. <gasps> Hi, I did to see you there. I'm JK Rowling. Despite my best efforts, you'll probably... <laughs> Despite my best efforts, you'll probably know me best from my deeply mediocre series of children's books, Harry Potter. Well, in this forum, I'm going to tell you how to write your own deeply unoriginal children's series that will poison the minds of those who've read it. For those of you who haven't read it yet, Harry Potter is a wondrous story about a child who goes to a conventional British boarding school. Oh, but here's the twist. He's a wizard. <laughs> Imagine! Now I know what you're thinking, JK, but that sounds like it takes a lot of imagination. Well, you'd be wrong! Because I've gone out of my way to make sure that every single part of the world is as boring as it could possibly be. Well, let's take an example, shall we? What would be a sort of one of the first things that comes to mind when you think of the world of Harry Potter? Would it be, I don't know, wizard chess? Now, what is Wizard Chess? Is it, I, I don't know, so a brand new game that incorporates elements of chess, but maybe works as a bit of an allegory for something else in the story and you know, has new pieces, that, you know, like mages and goblins or whatever. It could even act as exposition for the world and tell you something about the world of Harry Potter. No, you're thinking too big. 
Wizard chess means the pieces move. Now we're boring. So how about another example then? What about uh, Freddos? <laughs> Magic Freddos. That's right, chocolate frogs. They're chocolate that moves. Remember, movement is magic, and it's the only type of magic that counts. Moving car! Moving tree. Well, hooray! <laughs> Hopefully that's given you the advice you need to write the most boring possible version of your fantasy world. I've been checking... <laughs> couple of things going on there. I don't know if you noticed them, they were quite subtle. One, she's full of bile now. She's she's terrible. She's a horrible person. And uh, two, it's a shit series. And the excuse that it's for kids doesn't hold up because there are much better children's novels. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer a £20 bounty to anybody who can send me an original idea from the Harry Potter series that hasn't been done elsewhere previously. There you go, £20 bounty. I'm like James Randi here. Okay, so the question is, who wrote the far superior children's book series, The Sword in the Stone? Who wrote The Sword in the Stone? There you go. Okay, let's go back and do those questions again. Uh, general knowledge, question number one, what type of creature is a painted lady? What type of creature is a painted lady? Question number two, the name of which pasta means quills. <laughs> means quills in Italian. Uh, question number three. I'm going to play Noll's music again. So. It's Friday night. I asked her to do this, by the way. The artists. It is amazing. You should A, be following her at this address, and B, just, I don't know, just, follow, just follow her. She's amazing. All right. Question number four Where on a horse would you find a frog? Where on a horse would you find a frog? Where on a horse? <laughs> Where on a horse would he find a frog? And question number five: Jacob Rowling's a terrible person. She is shit, and her books are wank. But who wrote the? And stop saying you enjoy the books. You're not allowed anymore. Um, who wrote the Sword and the Stone? Who wrote The Sword and the Stone? Feel free to disagree, and don't remember that. Don't forget that £20 bounty is still on offer. Send me an original idea from the Harry Potter series that hasn't been done before. And I will pay you £20 if you can do it. Um, no, you don't. And you shouldn't. Uh, thank you, Baven. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the next round, which is history slash geography. Um, and then we'll go through the answers to the first two rounds. There are three rounds in total, five questions in each. So history slash geography. Question number one. What toy, what toy was originally called the Pluto Platter when it was released when it was first sold in 1955. What toy was originally called the Pluto Platter when it was first sold in 1955? What was that? Huh? Huh? What was that? Huh? Um, question number seven. With which country does France share its longest border? So France has borders with many countries. With which country does it have its Longest land border. <laughs> Question number eight. By what name is Gravelly Hill Interchange better known? 
This is geography. By what name is Gravelly Hill Interchange best known? No. Uh, not after what you said last week. All right. Question number nine. Uh, what was Madonna's first UK number one hit? The artist Madonna, what was her first UK number one hit? And question number 10. In what year... In fact, let me, let me play the video that's related to this. So watch this video, and then we'll um, do the question. So watch this video, and then we'll do the question. Hello. Thank you all for coming. Thanks for taking time out your busy schedules to come and listen today. All the last couple of days I've been going through something no father should. But I really appreciate ITV, BBC and Sky for giving me this national forum to appeal to their kidnappers. Anyway, as I said, thank you very much for coming. I think what might help is if we begin with a timeline of events. So Tuesday night, I closed up the restaurant. It, was, it had been busy. We just launched a new range of items. And I noticed that wife and kids were missing. They, they were no longer there. And I ran out, I went, kids, kids, the wife, the wife. And nobody could help me. Nobody could see them. Nobody had seen them leave. And I just, it breaks your heart. And that was Tuesday. It's now Friday. And I haven't heard I'd uh, It's completely out of character for everybody. So I just, I, I just want to get back to the business of running restaurant as a family. You know, it's been hard road to get this far, but we finally launched that, that new range of items, like I said, and, and really just want to get back to that. Anybody got any questions? James Prendergast from The Express. How foreign would you say the kidnappers were? Like Chinese foreign or something else? Well, I, again, we don't know. Nobody saw anything. Uh, I, I don't want to speculate about where they were from, you know, and at the restaurant we... We, James is on on Cali Road. We we cater to to everybody, so I don't want to I don't want to sell. We a range of range of items, range of cuisines. Uh, uh, yeah, you. Hi, I'm Peter Tracy from the Sun. Why did immigrants do this to the country? I, like I said, it had been busy. We do we do good deals and we do diff, different deals every night. And and this one had felt particularly uh, good. A, a new deal that we launched where you get. Two, two pizzas every every Tuesday for the price of one, and and we'd seen a huge huge uptake of people coming in and 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 scarfing them down and having a great time. And as I said, that's why I didn't I didn't notice until late that the the wife and the kids were missing. And I just no no father should have to go through that when he's just launched a new range of menu items. All right, Dad, uh, that man who lost his family. Um, I'm from the news, and uh, I wondered if you could uh, maybe um, elaborate on the new menu items that you were talking about because they sound they sound interesting. Uh, that's uh, that's a great question. Thank you very much for asking. So we, it's like I said, it's a two for one deal, and it's on anything from you know Mexican volcano all the way through to uh, to one of our veggie specials, and we do cater to all tastes. We you know we do veggie, we do halal. Everything you need really for a, a great night out with the family. We've just got an arcade machine in as well to James's on Cali Road, and you know if you if you don't mind, I'll just I'll just pop a map up of where people can find us. You know, find me uh, at the moment. But that's that's a great question. And oh, they turned up. Thank you very much, everybody, for this. Thank you to BBC Sky ITV for giving me this free airtime. So, all right, we'll do look over those menus, and I hope to see you there soon. Bye. <laughs> it made me laugh. <laughs> And ultimately, isn't that the mark of a massive prick? <laughs> Their own jokes make them laugh. So, um, yeah, so the question is, unbelievably, in what year did Madeleine McCann disappear? In what year did Madeleine McCann disappear?
All right, so I'll give you five more seconds to um, go through those last uh, couple of answers. Oh, shit. You know what that sound means. Okay, look at those. We're doing it slightly differently now. Look at those last five answers. What I want you to do is come up with the funniest connecto, so the funniest possible link between those answers. So between the answers to the last five questions, what's the funniest one? So as I go through and do the answers now, mark them, but also try and think of a funny connection between the two. Either let me know on Twitter. Um, who's ringing me? Uh, let me know on Twitter by texting me or in the chat below, and we'll put those up. Thank you. Okay, so let's go through and do those answers now. Um, general knowledge, question number one, what type of creature is a painted lady? What type of creature is a painted lady? It's a butterfly. That's a butterfly. The French call it a Jezebel. Uh, question number two, the name of which pasta means quills in Italian? That's penne. Penne. You might remember it because it sounds like... No, I'm not going to... All right. Uh, question number three. Listen again to this. Tell me who wrote the lyrics, who wrote the tune. It's Friday night And the lights are low You're looking out For a place to go a point for each one, ABBA. They did the lyrics. Uh, I believe it was Bjorn. Don't look it up or even try to research that, but it was Bjorn. And it was also Elvis Presley. It was Elvis. So you get a point for ABBA and you get a point for Elvis. Uh, question number four. Where on a horse would you find a frog? Uh, the foot. On its foot. Question number five. Who wrote The Sword and the Stone? A far superior... Stop reading Harry Potter. Stop even defending it at this point. She's such a dick. Imagine having that audience and punching down. Um, T.H. White wrote The Sword and the Stone. T.H. White. Moving on to round number two, history and geography. Uh, which toy was originally sold as the Pluto Platter in 1955? The Frisbee. The Frisbee. That was the Frisbee. Um, question number seven. With which country does... Ah, good one. With which country does France share its longest border? That's Brazil. That's Brazil, uh, by French Guiana, or Guiana. I actually don't know. Um, but yeah, it's Brazil. Question number eight, by what name is Gravelly Hill Interchange better known? Spaghetti Junction. Spaghetti Junction. Better couple of you feel like fools right now. Uh, what was Madonna's first UK number one hit? Number one hit, Natalie. I'm sure Baven got that. Um, it was Into the Groove. Into the Groove. And in what year did Madeleine McCann disappear? Well, that was 2007. That was 2007. And to date, it has given the Daily Express 1,482 front pages. Okay, so what I want you to do is top those up. What we're going to do is let's take another look at what you could win. Remember, if you get the door wrong, you'll get a bin with tits. If you get the door right, you'll win a brand new 1979 Ford Esprit. So let's take a look at that. Oh, do I have a drum roll? No, but I have this. Bravo, bravo. 
Tiffany, how you doing in that airtight room with that 1979 pre-lighted car? Pretty good. It looks pretty good. Oh, wrong one. Uh, but yeah, we'll see much more of Tiffany later on and throughout the course of the series. So here we go. Moving on now to question uh, to round number three, which is almost unbelievably also general knowledge. It's also general knowledge. So here we go. A text. Good gag, Noel. Good gag. So, in what question number 11? In what year was Heinz established? I'm trying to keep this to a tight half hour, so we're already going to run over, but in what year was Heinz established? Hmm? Yeah? What? In what? What? In what year was Heinz established? The uh, condiment brand. Okay. At the time of writing, which is May 2020, who's fifth in line for the British throne? Who is fifth in line for the British throne? Remember, our Madge, she, uh, she saved us from 5G. She saved us from Brexit. And she saved us from... No, maybe that is it. Yeah, that's it. Worth every penny. Uh, question number 13. What's the capital of, I of Iceland? What is the capital of Iceland? Remember, do get those funny connections in. Okay. Uh, question number 14. What does IPA stand for? What does IPA stand for? So in terms of beer, what does IPA stand for? And question number 15, the final question for the entire quiz. What is the largest country in the world. So by landmass, what is the largest country in the world? So let's go through those one more time. Uh, do get those through to those, your answers when I've given you the end. Let's go through those one more time. Uh, in what year was Heinz established? In what year was Heinz established, the condiment brand? 57 varieties. Um, question number 12, at time of writing, who is fifth in line? to the British throne, which parasite is fifth in line to the British throne. Uh, question number 13, what is the capital of Iceland? What's the capital of Iceland? Imagine being a parent and going, oh, you could do whatever you want. You can achieve anything your heart sets its mind on. And living in Britain, where unless you're born into the royal family, you can't do, you can never be the ruler. It's bullshit. Uh, question number 14. What does IPA stand for? What does IPA stand for? I very nearly went, what does stand for? And uh, question number 15, the final question. What is the largest country in the world? I'll tell you what, why don't we take another look while you think about those. Why don't we take another look at her mad climbing the Empire State Building? Where's my fucking air support, Philip? I don't know if you can see that. Her Majesty's wearing Under Armour, uh, I don't know, running trousers. Um, no, no, that's my scarf. That is my scarf that I brought back from India that you said I was never allowed to wear. Okay, so uh, let's do, you've got another couple of minutes to get your answers into um, what's the, con the funniest connection. So here we go. Um, 
in what year was Heinz founded? What year was Heinz founded? That was 1869. That was 1869. Uh, who's fifth in line to the throne? Prince Louis or Louis of Cambridge. Prince Louis of Cambridge. Uh, what's the capital of Iceland? Of course, that is Reykjavik. That's Reykjavik. And um, what does IPA stand for? So you'll have drunk them, I'm sure. Uh, it stands for Indian Pale Ale. Indian Pale Ale or India? I think it's India. I think this site I got the questions from is actually wrong. I think it's India Pale Ale. And uh, Louis. It's Louis, apparently. And what is the largest country in the world by landmass? That's Russia. That is Russia. So what I want you to do is top those scores up. I want you to either post them in the chat below. I want you to send them through to me at Chris M. Sutcliffe. I want you to text them to me. And uh, along with any final entrance to the um, to the funniest connecto question. Oh, that wasn't right either. There you go. Uh, and in the meantime, watch this, because this, this is deadly serious, by the way. This next video I'm going to show you is deadly, deadly serious. And in the meantime, yeah, get, get your answers through to me. And also, get your wallets ready. Hey everybody, it's Chris here. You'll know me best as the host of Corona Quiz, but I also have a number of other business ventures going, and I'd like to introduce you to my latest one. It's called Sunset Funset LLC. Sunset Funset is an incredible new company designed to help you celebrate your love of after dark activities. We're heading into summer, and that means that you're gonna be out there when the sun is setting and you're having a good time. Well, I'd like to introduce you to three designs for t-shirts, mugs, apparel, everything to help you celebrate your love of Sunset Funset. Whether you like the dazzling veneer of the 1980s, the retro-inspired look that has endured for so long, or you like the edgy 90s inspired one. Take that, Dad, this t-shirt says, but also it celebrates Sunset Funset. Or if you're feeling slightly more elegant and self-assured, why not go for this, oh, for this noughties inspired design, which celebrates the simple things in life while also celebrating Sunset Funset. Why not get it on a pillow and help support Corona Quiz? You fuck. You can buy all of these products now by going to this link which I'll also post on social. And remember, you can't have fun set without sunset. It, these are real, by the way. These are real. All right, so go to that address uh, to, buy, to purchase one of my sunset fun set t-shirts. This is your opportunity to get in on the ground floor of what is sure to be a teen sensation. And also, because I did it for the 90s and the 80s as well, a millennial and a boomer sensation as well. You can genuinely buy those t-shirts right now. You can also have them as a pillow, you fuck. You can also have them on a mug, as a phone case. Go to that link, which I'll share on social, and please do purchase it because otherwise, the, these 10 episodes I've done have been for nothing. I, I've i lost, I reckon I've spent, I'm trying to work this out now, I reckon I've spent about 100 quid on this, between licensing music and, not to make anybody feel guilty, because it's actually been good fun, but I've spent a shit ton of money on this. Buy a t-shirt, you fucks. Anyway, so, the the winner is... Because of their, there was there were so many 11s. I haven't seen so many 11s since um, I watched Spinal Tap on six TVs at once. That's a good, that's a good gag off the top of my head. And it is the Palgrave Elliots. So that's Phil, Steph, and Rory. They have won again, and they have gone for the left door. So commiserations to anybody else. Thank you very much to Her Majesty for not being a uh, horrific parasite. 
you know, as not to break kayfabe, the royals are. They are. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to pull up those doors again. I'm going to see whether Phil and Steph and Rory have won Busty Bin or whether they've won the brand new, 19, well, not brand new, the 1979 Ford Esprit. Okay, so everybody, please do put your hands together for the Powerboat Elliots who've won this week with their, uh, because of their good joke. The connector was New Walker's Crisp Flavors. That's a good gag. That's a good gag. Okay, so here we go. Fingers crossed. They've won the car and not the bin. Here we go. Which one is it? They've gone for the left door. It's the car! It's the car! Oh my god, congratulations! Tiffany, why don't you show... <laughs> Tiffany? The fumes! The fucking fumes! Get her out! Get her the f Get her out! Fuck! Yes, it's awesome. 